Welcome to Candlelight 2022. We are so excited that you joined us here tonight, and we hope that you'll sing along with us as we worship the one and only true meaning of Christmas, Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and warm up our voices and let's sing a Christmas medley. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill it with some of our favorite Christmas songs. So sing along with me. Let's go. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. To look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten Glistening once again With candy canes and silver lanes that glow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas With toys in every store But the prettiest sight to see Is the holly that will be own front door. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Though everybody knows A turkey and some mistletoe Help to make the season bright Tots with their eyes all aglow find it hard to sleep tonight. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know where the tree Tops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. May your day Right, and may all your Christmases be white. Yeah. I'll be home for Christmas. Christmas 
if only in my dreams. You guys sounded awesome. Let's do this thing. My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. She tried to teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant. So she told me to play an eight note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? And she said, I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. Now, I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause. The first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. And that's when I realized the good news she was talking about.
The following information is not based on a true story. It is a true story, and I believe. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. These were the words of the angel announcing the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. This was the fulfillment of many years of waiting and longing and prophecies foretold. Throughout the years, every sunrise and every sunset, it counted down the days until the arrival of the Savior. One by one, the prophets of God raised their voices, telling all who would listen that God had not forgotten His promise. They declared with accuracy how this Savior would be born, where He would be born, who He would be, and what He would bring unto all mankind. Every time these words were recited, faith in God, in the hearts of those who believed, it caused them to remember that God keeps His word. The prophet Isaiah said that his birth would be born of a virgin. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. He also identified who the Savior would be. He said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. The prophet Micah told us that Jesus would be born in the city of Bethlehem. The name Bethlehem means house of bread or place of sweet waters. How fitting it would be for Jesus Christ to be born in this place for he is the bread and he is the sweet water that satisfies the hunger and the thirst in the lives of all people. Yes, Jesus Christ was more than just a baby in the manger. He would bring a government in the hearts of men and women that would believe in him, a government that would be superior to any other government that ever has been or ever will be. His government would be It would bring lasting and enduring peace to all that believed because He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the mighty God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Joseph knew the reason love had to reach 
just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers of the world? Why him inside this table filled with hate? Why her? She's just an ordinary. In the city of Nazareth, among the shops and the busy people, there lived a young, engaged couple by the name of Mary and Joseph. They would be visited by God. Joseph was a carpenter, one who worked with his hands. Both, it seemed, were from prominent families in that area. And I'm sure that they both looked forward to a wonderful wedding filled with elegance and splendor. But this night, the angel Gabriel would visit them, and what he told them would affect their wedding, wedding plans and change the rest of their lives. Yeah. 
Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream and said, Joseph, the son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him Mary for his wife. The day had finally arrived for the child to be born. At the exact time that Mary would give birth to this little baby, Mary and Joseph, they went to the city of Bethlehem in order to fulfill the prophecy where Christ would be born. By command of Caesar, each family would be taxed, and they must go to the city of their lineage, Joseph's city was Bethlehem. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from the city, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. There he went to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Take a little breather from the madness. There's new life in the stillness and beauty for ashes. Lift up a song, every heart.
Can you imagine how long the journey and how uncomfortable the ride to Bethlehem must have been for Mary, who was nine months pregnant? They did not have modern transportation. There were no buses. There were no cars or trains. So she probably walked or she rode a donkey into the city of Bethlehem. The distance between Nazareth and Bethlehem is about 80 miles, and it would have taken them about four days to travel this distance on foot. It must have been late when they arrived. When they looked for a place to spend the night, all of the hotels were full. One by one, they turned this soon-to-be family away. Sorry, there's no room here. When finally he came to the last hotel in the city, Joseph hears the words, sorry, there's no room here at this inn. In my mind's eye, I see Joseph as he turns and he shuffles slowly towards the door as exhaustion, frustration, rejection, and anger shows up in a steady stream of tears as they course down his face. And then he turns and pleads with the hotel manager, Please, my wife, she needs somewhere to stay. She's having a baby. Please, anywhere. Is there anywhere here in this establishment she can stay and we could have a room? And then the stable keeper or the innkeeper, he said, there is one room available, but it's in the stable. It's not much, but I can give you blankets and it will be a warm place out of the weather. I wonder if the innkeepers had known that they were turning away, who they were turning away, if that would have made any difference at all to them. Would they have made room available when they found out and they knew that their hotel would be the vehicle that God would use to introduce the Savior of all mankind into this world? Sometimes, though, we do the same thing, don't we? Our lives get so crowded that if we're not careful, we turn away the only one who can make all of the difference in our lives. So I ask the question to you tonight, what is your life filled with this Christmas season? And is there any room for the Savior in your life? Maybe this Christmas season, you are the one who feels rejected and set aside with no one and nowhere to connect. If so, I hear the Lord Jesus Christ Say, wait, there's room for you in my house. You don't have to feel rejected or unloved or misplaced any longer. For the one who loves you most was rejected first. And now he beckons you to come home. For there is a place prepared for you in his house. stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin. Thank you. 
And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing, which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. I wonder if the stars shined brighter that night when Christ was born. I wonder if the wind ceased to blow and if the masked raccoon stopped his stealing. Did all of creation stop what they were doing? And pay attention to this baby in the manger? I believe the answer to all of these questions is yes, for it was a special night. It was a sacred night. It was a silent night. It was a holy night. It was a night of wonder. Oh, I 
Thank you, Jesus. He's a wonder tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost in this room right now. This evening, we have we've retold the greatest story ever told. We've sang songs of Jesus' birth. Songs like, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Because Jesus brought joy to the world, it has given us a reason to dance. Hallelujah. It's given us a reason to sing in this room. When the men saw that star that night, the sky that led them to the baby Jesus, they rejoiced. They shouted. And when they saw the baby, they worshipped him. So it's okay to rejoice and shout in a candlelight service. It's okay to shout hallelujah when we remember the birth of Jesus. Amen? We heard a song about how, yes, it was a strange way to save the world on that old holy night. I've come to tell someone tonight that I know Jesus is still in your silent nights because He is a wonder worker. Jesus works wonders. Come see the wonder. Come see the King. There are so many songs that proclaim the meaning of Christmas, but it's up to you and I to believe and accept That which we sang and talked about tonight. Macy's department store is, it's known for its Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The big balloons, floats that line the streets of downtown New York. But there is something else that Macy's is known for around the Christmas season. It is known for its Believe campaign. The Believe campaign is rooted in a letter to the editor of the New York Sun written by an eight-year-old, Virginia O'Hanlon, in 1897. She asked, is there really a Santa Claus? A New York Sun newsman, Francis P. Church, responded with a wonderfully worded essay on the importance of believing and including the famous line, yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus. He exists as love and generosity and devotion. Macy's stores around the country have letter writing stations. They're called Believe Stations. They have a Believe Meter. And their store's promoting this. Now please do not get me wrong here tonight. I am not here to end this candlelight service promoting Macy's. They didn't give me any money tonight to promote them, but I would accept it if they did. (laughs) I need a new suit like Brother Jerry has from Macy's tonight. (laughs) I'm not here to promote Macy's. I'm not here to promote Santa Claus in this room. I don't care anything about that. I'm simply, I simply share this story to tell someone in this room tonight 
It's one thing to sing the songs of Christmas about the true story of Jesus' birth. But it's another thing to believe in the story of Christmas. It's more than just seeing and hearing the story. Tonight, I hope to persuade someone that's in this room or someone that's watching online tonight. I hope to persuade someone to believe in the story that we have been talking about tonight. Simply put, I want you to see that Jesus came for you. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to tell someone in this room, the enemy of your life is not after your physical stuff tonight. Most of the stuff you came in worried about tonight, the devil doesn't need and he doesn't want. You're worried about your house. You're worried about the presents under the tree. You're worried about the car. The devil's not going to be stealing your car tonight and taking it for a drive. I'm telling you that right now. Now your car might get stolen tonight, but it wasn't the devil. <laughs> devil might have made them do it. <laughs> devil don't want your car. Devil's not worried about your house. The devil's not worried about uh, uh, your physical health tonight. He 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 is worried about this and this alone. The devil wants your mind. He wants you to quit believing and having faith in a baby that is born in a manger. The devil, what he wants is he wants you worried. He needs you to be upset. He needs you to be emotionally frustrated. Any way he can get your mind, he will do it. The enemy is after your mind tonight. He is after your belief tonight. You say, how do you know that? Well, it's been his tactic from the very beginning. All the way back in the garden. He wanted to tear down Adam and Eve's belief system in the garden. Satan didn't try to move them out of the garden. He didn't say, take a hike out of the garden. No, uh -uh, that's not what he did. He tried to move them away from what they believed. Hath God said, you couldn't eat of every tree? Did God really say what you thought he said, Eve? Is that what you truly believe, Eve? The devil knew if he could get them to not believe in what God had told them, then unbelief would move them out of the garden themselves. Tonight he is not any different. He's been trying hard this year to throw things in your path for one reason, and that reason is for you to stop believing in Jesus. If you stop believing, then his work is done because you will perish in your sins. He's not after your stuff. He's not after your body. He's after your belief system. And whatever he is attacking tonight, your body through sickness, your children, your husband, your wife, your finances, it's all after one thing. He is going after your belief in Jesus Christ. Unbelief has entered into some of your lives here tonight. You have thought about throwing in the towel. You've heard all this better together stuff this year, but you've questioned, do I really need the church? Do I really need to go? Do I really need the friends that are there? Do I really need to live this lifestyle? If your belief is in a religion tonight, you're wrong. If your belief is in your children, your spouse, your pastor, your stuff, it will eventually crumble and fall. That's why our hope tonight needs to be in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and His righteousness. Not mine, not the one that you're sitting next to, not your parents, not your your daughter, your, your brother, your sister, not even your pastor tonight. You need to fall back in love with Jesus and His belief in Him. I felt this so strong today, and I told this in the first service. I felt this so strong, and I feel it here tonight.
As I prepared for this, the Lord told me this is going to be a different kind of candlelight tonight. Belief is going to come back into some people's hearts. Belief is going to come back into some people's lives that are watching online. They're going to get their childlike faith back tonight. And they're going to see the attack that you're going through. Whether it's a physical attack or a mental attack, whatever the attack is. The attack that you're going through is not after your stuff or your family. It's after you to stop believing. Because if they can get you to stop believing, then they, you will take out your family with them. You will take out your kids with you. And so if the devil can make you stop believing in Christmas and the story of Jesus. Sometimes you just need to remind yourself, I believe in God. Sometimes you just need to raise up a hand and say, I'm a believer. Uh, you know what a believer does? A believer believes. You don't just believe on Sunday. You don't just believe during church service. Uh, this is bigger than candlelight. This is bigger than church. Uh, it's about being a believer in the house. Uh, it's about knowing that Jesus came to this world uh, so that I might live. Uh, it's about Jesus that came to this world uh, so that I might not have to go to a devil's hell and I come to tell someone tonight and I come to raise my hand and say to the devil himself devil I'm still a believer devil I still believe in Christmas devil you tried your best to get me to go back and stop believing in Jesus Christ but I am a believer tonight in the hospital, I'm a believer. In the poorhouse, I'm a believer. In the bread line, I'm a believer. When I don't got a car that runs, I'm a believer. I'm a believer when I'm up. I'm a believer when I'm down. I'm a believer when my faith is steady. I'm a believer when my life is shaken. Though He slay me yet, will I trust in Him? Oh, some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But I'm a believer and I only trust in the name name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might knock me down. I might be broke, busted, and disgusted. But I come to tell you even though I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, I'm still a believer. And I still believe in Christmas.
Hallelujah. I still believe in Christmas tonight. I said this morning, there's a war on Christmas. But it's been fighting for all, ever since Jesus was born in a manger. It's nothing new. Our first service, we had Sister Tina Rapier here, who over 20 years ago, on a candlelight service like tonight, made her first step toward believing in Jesus. On a night like not tonight, she lit a candle, and she said, I believe what they're talking about. I believe, I feel what they're talking about in my heart made her to follow the plan of salvation because nobody should perish when you believe. And so tonight, I I feel the same way. I, I feel like there's someone tonight that's here, you're watching online, you've had a tough 2022, maybe a tough few years, and it's shaking you to your core. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never heard about this man named Jesus. Let me tell you, he's here for you. And he loves you. And what you felt is his spirit. And so tonight, if you're a believer, and if you're saying, I believe in Jesus no matter what, no matter what sickness, no matter what trial, no matter what situation I'm going through, I still believe in Christmas and I still believe in Jesus. If you're here tonight, I want you to come up front and I want to light your candle because I want to believe with you. Come on, Brother Jerry, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, who's next? Thank you, Brother Jerry. Come on, Brother Don. Yes, that's right, young lady. Jesus loves you tonight. He cares for you tonight. That's it, young man. Jesus loves you tonight. That's it, Micah. Gracie. Jesus loves you tonight. He loves you tonight. Now, can you pass that to someone else and, and, and with, with you and say, I'm a believer. I, I'm going to believe with you tonight. No matter the problem you're going through, I'm a believer. And will you stay up here as our praise team comes? We're going to sing one more song to end us tonight. And I want you to sing this with all your heart. If you'll stay up here with me, I believe that God is getting ready and He's doing some great things. If you've never asked God to forgive you of your sins, Right now is a good time. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive me for all my sins. Lord, I believe in you. That's your first step. That's the first step towards salvation right there. Amen, amen, amen. Will you sing this song with us here tonight? One more thing. When we get, okay, we're going to sing Silent Night. But when we get to the chorus, when we get to the chorus, I want you to just raise up your candles and sing it with all your heart. All right? Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Will you raise your candle and sing this chorus with us?
in this room here. awesome about Jesus many things but this is some of us up here it's, it, this is our fourth service today and at every service Jesus showed up Amen. we were at a retirement home with 11 people and Jesus showed up because when you praise Him, it don't matter. It don't matter if it's one or two, or two or three are gathered together in His name. There He is. So when you go home, I want you to take this candle. And I want this to be a reminder that I'm a believer. And when you're going through a difficult time, the same spirit that you feel in this room right now 
is the same spirit that will meet you in the middle of that difficult situation. And whenever you're there, you go back to wherever that candle is. Maybe it's next July, 2023. And you go back and you say, I'm having a difficult time, Lord. You get that candle back out. You say, but I'm still a believer. I'm still a believer. I'm still a believer. We love you all here tonight. Thank you for coming out tonight to Firstborn Ministries candlelight service. Uh, I didn't do this the last service, but I want to make sure because we need to give honor to whom honor is due. There are many of you here tonight that you've been at both services tonight. You've helped us out, whether greeting, outside, putting the candles outside, putting the candles out in here. Whatever you did, I want to first of all give you honor tonight. Thank you for doing that. You are a big part of this service here tonight, these services. Then I want to give honor to everyone who participated up here on the platform. All of our musicians did such a great job here tonight. We're so glad, so so thankful for them. Sister Julie back on the sound. And let me tell you, a guy who has a difficult ser- two services tonight is the guy back in that room, Hunter Linzendorf, works the hardest. I'm telling you, he works the hardest out of anybody here tonight because if something goes wrong up here, everybody looks at him. So Hunter, you did a good job tonight. To everyone here, Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas. Don't forget to come to church on Christmas. 9.30 a.m. We'll see you then. Merry Christmas, everybody. We love you. Have a good night. For every family, we have an ornament. So just hold up for just a moment until Heather gets out there. We started this tradition last year. We have an ornament for you, for your family.